I want to start with the economic data we got today. ISM services in the U.S., it was okay. It was maybe a little bit soft on the headline. What's your read on the global economy and the U.S. economy? I think the global economy, considering the number of conflict and uncertainty on China, is actually doing okay. And I think that um, when you turn it into demand for energy, I think the demand of energy is still growing. The oil in particular liquid demand, I think, has been tracking fairly well to the GDP growth for the last 40 years, and I believe this is still happening. So the U.S. economy, I believe that uh, there was a lot of fear of recession, mm -hmm. a lot of fear of uh, miss uh, soft landing. I believe mm -hmm. that what we see today happening, and many indicators in the U.S. prove that uh, this uh, economy has a lot of resilience and will certainly have a nice uh, soft landing that will uh, uh, keep the economy growing and uh, success. All right, so maybe a pretty solid economy, like steady as she goes. Um, steady as she goes has been M&A uh, in the oil space here in the U.S. Does M&A here for oil guys mean less business for you or less pricing power going forward? No, I think it is not a surprise that this industry is consolidating. I think the consolidation brings um, scale, efficiency, and access to tier one resource that are in, in scarce uh, uh, access. So I believe that for us, the bigger the better, as we call it. Uh -huh. We're doing typically better with a larger customer that have a, a larger portfolio of uh, acreage and, and solution uh, we can provide. So typically, we provide uh, more recovery, operational performance, and during this transition, more digital services as company wants to extract synergy, wants to extract the uh, effect of scale, mm -hmm. and wants to prove uh, that they can gain efficiency by using the best technology they have, both companies are using, so we so, try to be successful with our technology, and for us, it's globally positive. So one plus one doesn't equal less than two. One plus one equals it plus will, two. It will, <laughs> it will on occasion, okay. because there will be consolidation of activity that will high-grade the portfolio, high-grade the resource set, but as an intensity of technology and what is left, the intensity of technology solution uh, is going higher, and we typically are, are doing well, and we anticipate to do well and to perform in, in the U.S. So based on that, I, I know that shale is like an infinitesimal part maybe of your business, but I do want to uh, get your take on, do you, are we going to see another surprise performance from U.S. shale production this year like we did last year? I think we'll, I'll be surprised that we have a repeat to the same scale. However, I think we should not uh, discard the progress we are seeing in uh, efficiency in uh, performance of technology, and we are part of it. We provide performance uh, breakthrough to our mm -hmm. customers on, on well construction and other aspects, and customer benefit, and uh, drill faster, drill better wells, and complete and uh, lift their oil production in a better way. Now, there are technical limits to this. Mm -hmm. There are geology uh, that are constrained, and hence the, the, the trend that we are seeing in M&A, that is trying to make the best out of the existing resource set, and combined, but for us, right. it's not as small. I think uh, the, the North America still represents 20% of our total business. Mm -hmm. We still have a very large fit for basin presence in the US, and uh, we, we are very successful with our technology in the US these okay, days. Well, not infinitesimal, but compared to your offshore, I mean, you're, you're a real you're giant uh, in, in the offshore uh, landscape. Um, wh what is your confidence in the offshore recovery that we've seen? Like, how long is your visibility into that sustainability? Uh, as we keep um, referring to this cycle as uh, characteristics of breadth, resilience, and duration, mm -hmm. I think the offshore attributes that uh, plays the most is uh, duration. We believe that, by definition, offshore is long cycle, particularly in deep oil environment. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there has been a resurgence of some exploration offshore, mm -hmm. not only in, uh, in existing basin, in infrastructure-led exploration, as we call it, but also into new frontier. So this is adding a pipeline of FID that will prolong the cycle beyond what we can see today. So today, if you look at the numbers, we anticipate that the global offshore will see about $100 billion of FID per each 24 and 25, the next, this year and next year, wow. as a size of FID that are in the pipeline in shallow or deep water environment. And this, we believe, will be extended beyond because there is a quite a large activity on exploration and appraisal in some province, in a new province, like uh, Namibia, like mm -hmm. uh, Suriname, like uh, 
the equatorial margin in Brazil. When you, when you say extended. Extended the, meaning? Like 2018, to, to 2028, 2029, yeah, late, like that. Much later into, into oh, wow, this okay. decade that uh, we could have anticipated maybe uh, two or three years ago. And of course, FID is final investment decision where people start to really like companies really put uh, money to work. One company or country that's putting less money to work maybe is Saudi, uh, Saudi Aramco. Uh, Saudi Arabia um, and Saudi Aramco uh, were not going to develop 13 million barrels of oil a day. You shrug because it wasn't a big deal, right? But when you look at your share price, the stock fell 7% and it hasn't truly recovered since that day. What are people getting wrong about the scenario? I think uh, we have been very clear on the market on, on the consequence of this decision. The consequence of the decision for us is immaterial. You know, potential to continue to grow in Middle East. Middle East is at, is at the record high level of investment combined with the oil capacity expansion mm -hmm. in Saudi, but in other, other countries, UAE, Kuwait, and development of, uh, of Iraq or Libya, further expansion. Secondly, in the entire uh, Middle East region, gas is becoming a critical strategic priority. It's and like both Qatar. conventional mm -hmm. gas, like Qatar is developing for LNG export, or unconventional and conventional gas for, for local consumption or for replacement of oil, uh, oil production. Well, if Saudi Aramco, though, stays conservative, like, does it start to bite in, like, 2025, 2026? No, I don't think they are conservative. I was there uh, okay. uh, for a week, uh, three weeks ago, and uh, the activity is as high as we have ever been mm -hmm. and, and have ever seen in, in the Middle East and in particular in, the, in Saudi. It's stretched. It's very, very strong. Mm -hmm. It's a record high land activity, record high offshore activity. This extension that was supposed to happen is at the moment suspended, delayed, could come back, that it could provide another 1 million barrel addition from offshore. We happen to be very well exposed and very long on onshore exposure mm -hmm. because of our integrated contract. Mm -hmm. We happen to be also extremely well exposed to gas in Saudi. So for us, is minimum or immaterial impact for this year for sure and for the foreseeable future. We see growth this year, mm -hmm. very significant growth in mm -hmm. all or almost all the country Middle East. We anticipate this activity momentum to continue into next year and this change of, uh, of two projects that have been postponed, that has been yeah. cancelled, that do not represent more than 1% of the total upstream spend per year is not changing our strategy, is not changing the game, is not changing what is the largest and biggest investment cycle in Middle East. And that is very good perspective to keep in that when we hear these headlines that they cross. So just to wrap up. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, we just saw OPEC Plus uh, continue the, uh, the extension of their cuts. Um, is 80 a floor, a top? Like, how do you see the oil market? Where's the band? The band has been, I think, OPEC has been willing to, uh, to set the floor at 80 or more. The oil price has stayed between 75 and 85. Mm -hmm. We anticipate to this market to stay, to stay stretched uh, because OPEC will continue to use OPEC Plus, continue to use their opportunity to adjust to the, market, uh, to the market demand supply equation. Uh, as you can see, the maturity of the US market uh, starting to go towards production plateau mm -hmm. will create more pull on international liquid demand. Uh, gas activity internationally continue to expand due to gas security. Mm -hmm. So this combination will continue to push and support activity outlook. And I'm not willing to predict, will not predict uh, all price, but we yeah. believe that uh, the balance of OPEC plus, the continued pull on international supply that will stretch the existing resource basins mm -hmm. internationally, will continue to support very healthy uh, oil price going forward.